guys welcome back and welcome to a new dragging video today we're going to be dragging Dior honey and her wig so without further ado let's get started and then at the end we're going to talk about some luxury YouTube stuff that I wanted to kind of share with you I have some thoughts on luxury YouTube and my sort of like my YouTube channel and the luxury like content space online in general we'll talk about that at the end so let's get started <laughs> let's start off with um, the Dior Boutique in David Jones in Sydney in Australia um, Someone wrote a review and said blatantly rude service. They don't even try and be friendly I simply walked up and kindly asked if they have a lip oil available. Oh my god We know where this is going don't we and the essay looked me up and down and and goes no family and said nothing else to us um, Seriously, isn't isn't it that difficult just to say no? Sorry or at least say no in a kind of way avoid this boutique okay so i mean look i think you know where i'm going with this i think we all know um we all know like what the tea is and what's going on um and if you don't know let me explain it to you at the end of the day a lot of these like luxury essays i think in luxury boutiques if it's not the beauty concession they don't want beauty clients to come to the store unless you're buying other things so for example, if you want to buy like, like I, I know some of you had told me in America, there's no big H in like department stores. Okay, but we're not talking about big H today. So pl please don't be like, oh, but you know, here, here it's not like that. I think that with like Dior and Chanel, like they're known for having those like beauty concessions, like all over the world, they'll have like their beauty concessions, right? Now, I think that the essays see someone coming into the Dior boutique where press a and bags are sold and other items and shoes and things like that. They're going to assume that you are there to buy ready to wear handbags, leather goods, shoes. So I think if you walk into a boutique that does, a Dior boutique that does sell like ready to wear and handbags and things like that. And I think if you only want to buy a lip oil like this person, I don't know how much a lip oil is in Australian dollars, but in um, South Africa, the lip oil is not even a thousand rand. It's like 900 rand, which is like 45 euros. The essay's like, the essay's like, I'm selling something for 45 euros today and that's it. I know that that person is Thai and that they're going to have to show that receipt um, or their sale to their store manager. Um, I, I would find it hard to believe that the Dior <laughs> concession does not have beauty products there. I would imagine that they are there. They're definitely there um, in other Dior's that do sell clothing and things like that. But again, I feel like it would be best to ask for the lip oil after buying like ready to wear or buying something else or even sunglasses. Um, I know you guys are gonna, you guys are gonna, you're gonna come for me in the comments, but like, she got her skull dragged after asking just to buy a lip oil, the lip gloss. It was probably like the dual like lip glow <laughs> as well. Um, so I'd love to know what you guys think about this one. Um, do you think, do you think that the essay is right to be annoyed if someone only wants to purchase, um, like a lip gloss or lip oil? Um, I'm trying to think like what like what would be the appropriate response like the person's going to get skull dragged um, They're going to get their skull dragged. I feel like at Louis Vuitton Like going in to buy the perfume is fine I did that with the Kusama perfume in January and it was fine and I had a good experience But the South African stores are a little bit different um, and they operate differently I think that they have a long-term vision of their client book and they want to build and nurture and grow their client base. The next review is from Dior in Sloan Street. It's very long, so I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I will just explain what happened. So it's a gentleman who, it's very, very long, like it's pages, pages, pages long. There's a gentleman who said that his wife had purchased um, a bag from Dior Sloan Street in London in the UK. And then she had decided after a few days, she had changed her mind a few days later in his words here. She saw online that yeah, she saw online that she could return the bag in 30 days, but she found out that she could only get a credit um, or exchange it. Okay, so then it's a long, long, long dragging review, um, and they're both basically saying how disappointed they are with Dior Sloan Street that they couldn't, um, you know, like get an ex like an ex get a refund or um, get, get it basically refunded. She said that she didn't find anything else that she liked. She said that they were trying to like well, he said speaking for her. He said that they were like trying to convince her to buy other items, something else, like the value of the bag, um, you know, and he said that it felt like that was like a cheap way of selling the brand, that there are other beautiful things. Like, okay, guys, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
and I don't care if you come to tussle with me in these comments honey because some of you watch these videos just to tussle with me I don't care okay let me tell you something guys it is very obvious that, that this is a great example of someone who just wanted the experience of luxury but didn't want to pay for it so wanted to p purchase like a beautiful high-end piece um, something really beautiful and expensive and then wanted to return it after she changed her mind um, luxury bags and fashion luxury ready to wear luxury everything is more expensive in the UK so I feel like shopping in pounds it's like you're shopping in pounds honey like it is more expensive and it's it, it is very 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 expensive I mean even here um, he even says he even says that he expressed his disappointment calmly and he told them he even said to them he, he, he mentioned it feels like we're being forced into buying something and I said lesson learned and it was I mean you saying a lesson learned is really passive-aggressive um, Dior Bobo is one of the top tier girls of the luxury industry this is the big leagues okay this is not like someone jumping into their car and going you know to Argos okay or going you know somewhere or, or going to Tesco or going to the supermarket and you're like okay I've changed my mind I don't want to buy something this is a top tier luxury brand honey um, with a very storied phenomenal beautiful stunning history um like I, I don't know about being passive aggressive to to the like essays or whatever I'm, I'm i'm not trying to be funny it is for you and me to know the terms and i think that the terms i think at the very least on Dior's website they do have terms laid out there i don't know if those terms are the terms that mirror like online like shopping in store and obviously if someone's shopping in the uk they would need to find out dual uk's um terms um i'm not surprised because i think that the problem is the reason why i think a lot of luxury brands do this big h do this they're known for this i think one reason why they do this is because there are so many people who come for that thrill i've spoken to a lot of luxury um essays who worked at a wide variety of brands and a lot of luxury essays have told me privately that there's so many people who come to the store um buy something really expensive get the whole glossy luxury treatment and then a few days later they've changed their mind like this gentleman's wife i'm not saying that she's not allowed to change her mind because i know some of you are gonna be like ah she's allowed to change her mind ah, she's allowed to change her mind but obviously dior have had this happen so many times to them that they have decided that they uh, are going to be telling people they can get a credit or they can do an exchange i'm not mad at them it's business honey i would do the same thing because there are too many people who come to the boutique um who just want to have that thrill um he even goes on to say you know the response was disappointing the aim for them was to keep the money but not a returning client a relatively short-term strategy usually found in places such as your typical tourist trap doesn't sound like these people were you know very good clients of Dior maybe this was like their first time so I mean what does Dior care this is Dior Sloan Street um I'm sure like that person like his wife just buying a bag it's like they probably sell you know so many bags per day like what is it to them to, to to kind of make it difficult on the person I'm not saying that I completely agree with them making it like super hard for them but um I'm not surprised that they did make it really difficult for them because there are people who are almost renting goods so they'll go to a store they'll buy something really expensive and then they'll be like I've changed my mind how convenient that you change your mind now I know some of you are gonna be like oh you don't understand returns because you live in a country where you can't you can't do that yes it's true in my country we don't um, have refunds you're not allowed to refund things once you bought something you can't refund it so we don't have returns in my country that's fine but I still think that this is a problem because I've even heard from other like luxury essays have told me privately messages like oh my god there are people who do this like people who come to the store they make this whole big deal oh I'm gonna buy a handbag today or I'm gonna buy red press a porte or whatever and then they buy a ton of stuff and then a few days later they process a ton of returns like at the store I'm not talking about people who are returning things online I feel like that's different because you're like buying things online I'm talking about people who, like you've physically gone to the boutique to buy something and then you're like i've changed my mind after a few days um dior, dior slow street bubble is not the one to play around with they're not playing with the girls honey so do not go there um to play with the girls um you're going to get your skull dragged the next one is dior in milan um this is from one of the boutiques in milan because there are a few of them in milan in italy totally no service received i felt very unwelcomed um despite walking in with the intention of buying a bag 
um, I had to approach um, the their essays to get um, their attention. The store, the essays looked judgmental, judgy, observing what you wear and shopping bags you carry prior to entering the store. Yeah, I think this is the Milan uh, one. Okay, now. I feel like this is stuff that we have chatted about before many times, particularly in Europe. Um, you know, I've, I've chatted about this before. And again, there's always going to be, I'm going to call them the Nick, the knicker brigade. There's going to be someone saying, I walked in Dior Milan in my knickers, in my pants, and it didn't matter. There's always going to be someone who's going to come and say that. But, you know, we've talked about this many times before, how like, you know, the way you present yourself does play a role in getting like good treatment at brands and that is something which i have noticed like presentation definitely plays a huge role in getting like good treatment at the store um and this person said that the essays you know were judgy and judgmental and looking up what you wear and the shopping bags that you carry i definitely think in europe like if you're carrying shopping bags like from other luxury stores and if you walk into a store they're going to be all over you um and they're definitely going to be like more willing to try and like help once once they see that you have like shopping bags you know from other stores and things like that that is definitely something which i experienced um as well well, like in Paris and I have said this before but looking nice and looking put together does get one better treatment in boutiques in Europe guys I'm sorry 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 I know some of you don't like it um it is what it is um these are European luxury brands um a lot of you I know you live in America you live in Canada where I think like athleisure and more casual clothing is more um, popular but I do think even in Europe like a casual look in Paris still looks really glamorous and really put together a casual look in London still looks great I mean Milan is the birthplace of is the birthplace of Prada Versace Moschino I mean like you know top tier Italian brands Milan is their hometown um, you know, you know, I'm sure the essays are going to be looking at what you're wearing like, girl, what are you wearing, girl, like coming in here looking a raggedy mess. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just delivering the tea. I'm not saying it's necessarily um, right. Okay, this one is, I believe, of the Rome Boutique for Dior. This was a very unpleasant experience. After waiting at the front of the line for almost an hour in ab above 30 degrees Celsius heat, I asked the security guard if the wait would be much longer. Um, seeing as um, over 10 people had left, the security guard told us once the next people leave, we would be the next ones. Even at this point, we were very overheated and not offered any shade or even a glass of water. We decided to wait a few more minutes. Um, he then responded um, again and said everyone was busy um, and they had appointments and they would not be letting in more people. The whole experience was very unprofessional and I will not be returning um, to this location. You know, we've talked about this before. This is very unfortunate. Um, I, I feel for this person. This is a very unfortunate um, thing to happen, but this is the reality of luxury shopping in 2023 and moving forward. It's going to be the reality in 2024. I think a lot of people um, miss the days of just walking into the store, but a lot of these brands, they are moving towards appointment systems only. Like they want you to make an appointment so that they can forecast um, what they're going to be selling, you know, on that day. And if you make an appointment like for press to they're like, oh, we have someone coming today to buy press to or to buy, you know, fine jewelry or to buy haute jewelry or whatever, right? And it's very unfortunate what happens to these people. I feel for them um, because queuing and heat um, is not um, a thing at all. But I'm not surprised because I think that the luxury industry has been moving towards appointments for a very long period of time. And since the panoramic, they really want to know like how, how many appointments do we have today? How many items are we selling? I have already told you guys before, I'm not an appointment person, but it looks like when I go to Europe, I'm going to have to be, you know, a, an appointment person in order um, to get good, good service. So again, it's very unfortunate um, that, that this happened. Um, to this person standing outside in 30 degrees celsius heat and queuing 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 trying to enter the dual store so you can spend thousands of euros of your hard-earned money yeah it's not a great feeling and i don't agree with it at all but unfortunately it's a sign of the times the demand for luxury goods is so high you have to remember that you know you're here watching me um this is like the luxury youtube platform there's so many people who don't have a YouTube channel, who don't watch YouTube videos, who don't watch luck, who don't follow Instagram pages, who don't, who are not even on TikTok and they love Dior and they're more than willing to queue. Um, so even though 
this person went on Google reviews and complained about it, that's not going to change the fact that there are people who are going to go there and queue. Again, very unfortunate to have to queue that long. But unfortunately, this is where the luxury industry is headed. I'd love to know what you think about that story because I do really empathize um, with that person for sure. Because I don't feel like that person's being a jerk or being annoying. Like, that's just the reality of it. What do you think about Dior, honey? Getting her skull dragged by the girls. Okay, the girls are dragging Dior. Everyone's dragging her. I think Dior deserves to get dragged. Some of you have told me that you think that Dior's really like like dual essays are fake and stuff i've heard this before i can kind of see where people are coming from they do have this like super sweet like sugary sweet vibe that kind of comes across like a little bit fake a little bit insincere i can see where people are coming from with that but i'd love to know what you guys think about these dual dragging stories what do you think about Jill getting her skull dragged and what are your thoughts i'd love to know make sure you keep watching because now i want to have yeah just like a chit chat conversation with you guys about some interesting things from the luxury youtube scene Okay, so now I wanted to do some luxury YouTube chit chat with you guys and luxury algorithms and all this stuff um, that's kind of been in my head anyway. So I watched a video a few days ago by a YouTuber called Nancy. I'll link her um, channel below. She talked about the luxury YouTube scene. Um, she mentioned a wide um, variety of topics in her video, but I wanted to talk about two things that she talked about. So she mentions presentation. And she talks about presentation, like vis-a-vis, -vis, like how luxury YouTubers present themselves on camera and she brings up makeup. Now, I wanted to talk about this because when I first was posting, I didn't really make that much of an effort, honestly. And some of my older videos, I do cringe. And trust me, I'm not fishing for compliments. I hate when YouTubers like fish for compliments and people are like, no, you don't need makeup, whatever. But like, I definitely wasn't trying as hard <laughs> and making more of an effort with presentation as I do today. I feel like today I make much more of an effort. I much prefer the presentation of my videos today, but I thought it was super interesting in her video when she talked about presentation because I definitely think like if you're posting about luxury um, like brands, luxury shopping, luxury products, the viewers expect you to look a certain way. Um, and I think that luxury YouTube in itself, like at least in the English speaking community, is still very active. People are watching videos every day and people are still very engaged. But I definitely think it is something that skews more towards if you make like an effort in your videos to look really nice. Because even I noticed like when I started making an effort, like I'm wearing like maybe more makeup um, and just like making more of an effort, you know, even with my hair, even little things like that. I did notice people watched my videos for longer. Like the nicer that I looked, people watched my videos for longer and I could see it in the watch time for each video. So I thought it was super interesting when she, you know, brought that up because it's definitely, I think, a thing. If you have a YouTube channel, I think like all of us with YouTube, with YouTube channels, we've all kind of thought about the way we come across like online and how we come across and does it matter like do you need to wear you know make do you need to wear like makeup if you're doing like posting a luxury youtube video yes or no um i would say you don't need to wear makeup but i must say once i was wearing makeup more frequently um i definitely noticed that my videos were starting to do better and better when i took my presentation more seriously on camera and it's really interesting because in my work life, I make a huge effort with presentation. I put my wig on, I put a blazer, I wear a nice skirt when I go to work, um, you know, put lip gloss on or lipstick. Like right now I'm wearing Big H lipstick from Big H and I bought it in February when I went to Paris. Like I was like, you know, I'm gonna film a video, a dragon video, and then I'm gonna talk about some luxury YouTube stuff. You know, I'm gonna put powder on my face, my dual powder, put my Hermes lipstick on, put my wig on put my Moschino, you know, press a shirt on to come here to talk to you guys. So I think presentation is a huge part of having a luxury YouTube channel. Um, and I think it is a crushing reality of it. I think she made, she made some like really, really good points about presentation. So when I watched her video, I was like, wow, I actually, you know, really, really agree with a lot of the things that she said. She also talked about comments. So she said how she watches luxury YouTube um, content um, online, like on the television, I beg your pardon. She watches it on her TV. Um, so maybe she, you know, she doesn't like have maybe the ability to leave a comment because she's watching it on the television. I must say, 
something I have noticed is the kind of like there's this been there's been this like huge like algorithmic shift with luxury um, content. And one of the biggest shifts has been towards like these different kind of metrics for engagement. It's not simply enough to like like someone's video. If you comment, that is stronger than like a like. So when I was watching her video and she was mentioning that, I thought that was super interesting because even with my analytics, like 15% of the people who watch my videos are watching on the television. Sometimes I watch on the television, but then I'll have my phone out so I can like respond to comments like if it's my video if I'm doing a premiere. But on that subject of comments, I also watched another video by my girl So Coco. Um, I'll link her channel below. Um, I love her channel. And she um, was talking in a Q&A about comments and the way YouTubers, luxury YouTubers treat comments. And I agree with everything that she said, so go check out her video. But in her video, she references this idea, this thing that she calls commenting up. So it's basically a luxury YouTuber maybe will film a video, just giving an example, they'll film a video and then they maybe there'll be a bunch of comments and maybe there'll be two or three comments from a YouTuber with a much bigger following. That person, the YouTuber, instead of like being supportive of the people who are so like loyal to them who maybe aren't you know famous YouTubers, they're like, oh my God, you know, they just want to focus on that person who has like a bigger following. Um, I think that that is definitely something that happens and I actually wanted to also expand on that and chat about how I've noticed like there has been like a shift in the way larger channels um, are operating and the way larger channels are kind of moving within the luxury YouTube niche. So for example, a lot of larger channels at the moment have been saying in videos, I've seen a bunch of larger channels say this, that they don't watch other like YouTube creators. They'll say, oh, I don't watch other like, I don't watch other luxury YouTubers. Um, I feel like when they say this, I don't understand, I don't really understand how you can say that, you know, um, because I feel like, I feel like it's it's natural to watch other people because we're all kind of posting similar content anyway. Nothing is truly original. Someone can have an original idea, but even the most original idea is not like truly original, you know, if that makes sense. So I don't really see the harm in watching other people's content and maybe uplifting someone who is maybe a small, a smaller, like has like a smaller following than you, because that's a great way to help people grow. In Nancy's video, she also talks about how she watches um, like luxury YouTube videos on the television, but maybe, you know, she doesn't have time to comment because she's watching on the TV. Comments are actually the new gold and it's more important to comment on someone's video than it is to like on a video. And I'll tell you why. I, for me, as a hobby, I just observe the, the way the algorithm works and the way the metrics of this algorithm work. And the way the algorithm works is very different um, to the way people think that it works. So um, in Nancy's video, she also refers to um, a group of uh, YouTubers, I think, who are, who are in a sort of clique of sorts. They tag each other in videos and they send each other presents. I think I know whom she's um, referring to. Um, that is, a, you know, a, t a tried and tested way of growing within the algorithm, like YouTubers coming together. This happens in all niches, not just luxury, coming together, kind of forming a digital collective of sorts and supporting each other in the algorithm. Now, I actually think that still works, but I actually think these days, the things that actually works are more metrics about how your videos are doing on an individual level versus maybe you coming in a group of people as a collective. So on an individual level, you're judged based on how many people share your video. That's actually more powerful than being tagged in a video by another YouTuber. Like how many people are sharing your video? So people sharing your video on WhatsApp, people sharing your video on, you know, like Telegram or, or whatever apps or on Facebook Messenger or Instagram DMs. That is more powerful than being mentioned um, in someone's video. Yes, being mentioned in someone's video is awesome and wonderful and it is a blessing. But your videos by, are judged by YouTube on, an, on that basis of it being your video, not the fact that a, a, a big channel mentioned you, even though that is wonderful, you need to get your videos shared and you need to get them out there. I think that she made, Nancy made some really good points about the luxury YouTube scene. Um, I've always been, you know, the reason why I use the leopard motif is like, I've always kind of just been doing my own thing, honey. I'm doing my thing on my own. Um, I don't do, I don't do tag videos, for example. I think the last tag video I did was like, 
maybe two years ago. Um, so guys, I'm sorry, my husband's going somewhere. I'm sorry about all the noise, but I think the last tag video I did was like two years ago now, and I think I've unlisted it or I've deleted it. And if I haven't deleted it, I'm going to delete it now after this video. But um, the reason why I don't do tags is because I find that tags are, tags don't help the person doing the tag. They only help the person who created the tag. I mean, it's nothing personal. It's not that I think I'm too good um, to do a tag video or anything like that. It's just that I found that even when I did a tag video, it didn't really help me. I didn't meet any new people who came to my channel and my video wasn't seen or pushed out um, by the YouTube algorithm, you know? Now back to So Coco's video when she was talking about comments. Oh my gosh, now comments are where like I, honey, I just have a different view to a lot of people to comments. Um, by the way, I completely agree with everything she said. I just wanted to add like my thoughts um, as well. Um, I don't like the way um, the luxury content creation scene handles comments. Um, and by that, what I mean is a lot of people who have pages in luxury YouTube never respond to people's comments. Like, I remember when I first started posting, I remember my husband one day came back from work and I remember it like it was yesterday. I had 118 subscribers <laughs> and he brought me a ring light. <laughs> Okay, so I could film my video so they could look better. And I remember being like, oh my God. And he'd be like, how many people commented today? I'm like, no one commented. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh my God, when are people going to comment, you know, on my videos? And eventually, of course, it happened. So I remember being so grateful for people commenting. And of course, um, people were commenting, so I would respond. A lot of people in the luxury content creation scene on YouTube never reply to people's comments. And they have so many excuses. Oh, I'm busy. I have a job. Girl, I'm like Phaedra. I have multiple jobs, boo -boo. I'm married, honey, I'm busy, okay, but I still have time to message back. If you send me a message, I'll respond. You send me a Facebook message, a message, I'll respond to you. You send me an Instagram DM, I'm going to respond. Send me an email, I'll respond to you, okay? Um, maybe it might not be then and there, because maybe I'm doing something else, but I'll definitely get back to you. So my like rule with luxury content um, watching, I don't watch anyone's channels if they don't respond to people's comments. Um, it's just one, it's just a decision I made and it suits me just fine because if I leave a comment on your page and you don't respond to me, um, that to me tells me that, um, you are filming, but you don't want to respond. Now, I remember saying this once and someone told me like, well, you know, you don't have children and there's some other luxury YouTubers, they have kids, they're busy, they don't have time to respond. I said, look, the point about kids is a fair one. But at the same time, I still feel like people can respond. You know, I don't have children yet. I feel like when I have kids, I feel like I'll still be coming on here um, to respond. Maybe you don't have to respond the same day, but you definitely need to respond. At the very least, respond for the algorithm because comments are more powerful than... Um, comments are way more f powerful than a, a YouTuber tagging you and you being tagged in a tag video, like a tag challenge. It's much more powerful to get an organic comment than it is to do someone's tag video, which ends up kind of pushing their channel forward, but it doesn't really do a lot for you. And that was the thing I noticed about tag videos. Viewers don't actually really like them. Viewers don't watch them. And then also they don't really do a lot for the person responding to the tag. So that's why I just made a decision not to do tag videos. I'd much rather go and support another YouTuber's video by writing a comment, um, watching their video obviously and writing a comment or mentioning it to you guys and saying, hey guys, go watch this video. I really enjoyed it. Um, like like the things I've just mentioned in this video as well. And shout out to my girl, Shani Cole. I saw that she had commented on Nancy's video as well. I love her channel. And I saw when I saw that Shani Cole had commented on Nancy's video, um, she's a black woman. I'm also a black woman. I was like, okay, cool. Like this, this is really cool. Like I, I respect Shani Cole's opinions and she commented on Nancy's video. That definitely made me more inspired also to even film um, my response here as well because I think also there's not a lot of support for black luxury youtubers um, and this is something which I've also chatted about um, I don't I don't think that a lot of the larger channels like support us as much as they could and that's something which you know I think so anyway um, those are just kind of my thoughts on it um, I think if you're watching this and maybe you're thinking of starting a channel please start a channel let me know if you have a channel. Um, I'll go and support and I'll go watch some of your videos. But please, for the love of God, respond to people's comments, okay? Please don't be Hollywood, okay? Think you're Hollywood and think you don't have to reply to people's comments like, you know, like, you know, like you're an A-list Hollywood celebrity, okay? That's the whole point of this platform is that it's engaging for everyone. 
the only line that I draw is if you personally attack me. If you're going to come here to my page to attack me, I'm going to either skull drag you in the comments or I'm going to ignore you. But it's very rare that I ignore someone's comments. Like, broadly speaking, I'll respond um, as long as your comment is said with peace and love. Sometimes people are mean and hurtful in comments as well. And I have found that clapping back works for me and it suits me just well. So. I feel like there's so much great content out there with luxury YouTube. I've told you guys before in a previous video how to find new creators. Don't wait for creators to be tagged in a tag video. Um, take agency over the algorithm. That's what I'm doing now. Like I'm taking agency over the algorithm and I'm subverting the algorithm on my own. There are a lot of things I notice about it, um, how it, how the algorithm will um, promote um, like you know white luxury creators ahead of promoting creators of color it will promote other people who um j just maybe look very different to me that's fine um that's the nature of the way algorithms are people when they see like a black face talking about luxury they just want to click off the video i get that a lot so i have to kind of over i have to kind of overcome those building blocks and i do that by creating very original content in my opinion and having original ideas creating really original ideas is like my way of subverting the luxury um youtube algorithm um and that is what i'm doing right now another tip that i have for you guys is something which i've told many of you many times but let me just repeat it if you're looking for new people to support, do not wait for a larger channel to mention someone. Don't wait for people to mention. Go and find new people to support. Go on the YouTube search bar, type in something which you like. For example, right now I'm looking for people unboxing Gucci items because I'm really obsessed with Gucci and I think I'm going to the Gucci store when I go to Joburg, so I want to look for things to buy and put, for, in my case, I put Gucci unboxing and then put, um, choose on the filter section, choose the videos that have been uploaded like this month you'll see all of the gucci unboxings that have been uploaded this month okay and it's not it and you'll be really surprised it won't be like the huge massive channels with 100k with 50k it'll be creators who have way less subscribers but they have bought something super dope and super cool go find new people to support don't just say oh i'm tired of hearing about people talk about Hermes and Birkins and Chanel and you know Louis Vuitton and Big Dior and you know don't don't just say that go look for people to support and don't wait for the algorithm to don't wait for the algorithm to recommend people to you um, go and find people to support and that is the thing that um, I would say at least for me like I've been posting now for a few years um, I'm very happy with how far my channels come. There's a limit to how far my channel can grow I don't live in the Western world. I live in Tanzania. I live in a developing country I don't live with luxury stores. I can't go to the stores every week to film a shopping vlog um, And I'm fine with that when I travel I have the chance to shop um, I can also order things from Lisa Viroma and then I have my commentary videos and then I have my travel tea vlogs and that seems to work for me and that's got me to 4,600 plus views without living in a Western country. So I'm quite happy. I mean, 4,600 views, 4,600 subscribers and 1.1 million views of 4,600 people. So I'm very, very happy um, with how far that my channel's come. But anyway, I just wanted to respond to some of those things because I thought that those comments were super, super interesting. But like I said, I just have my luxury YouTube rules, but I watch everyone. I don't say, oh, I don't watch other luxury creators. I watch anyone and everyone. I don't care how many followers you have. I don't care if you have 10 followers, if you have 1 million, if your luxury video is interesting, I'm going to watch your video. And as a general rule, I only ever leave like positive comments on channels. So I leave you with this kind of Tony Robbins thing, which is just continue to support people and be kind. Go check out the creators that I mentioned in this video and, um, you know, go watch their channels and be kind. But also um, find new people to support. If you don't want to see Hermes content all the time, find new people to support with the tip that I just told you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this dragon video and this chit chat at the end. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the weekend in my next video.